हेलो गाइस व्हाट्स अप सो हाउ आर यू डूइंग माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दोस्तों व्हाट इज अप विद यू हेलो स्वीटी हेलो तबस्सुम व्हाट्स अप व्हाट्स अप एंड व्हाट्स अप हेलो गाइस ऑन YouTube एज वेल गाइस यू ऑल नो दैट माय क्लास इज नाउ अवेलेबल ऑन YouTube एज वेल एज ऑन द ग्रेड अप ऐप सो माय डियर फ्रेंड्स एट बोथ साइड्स प्लीज डू लाइक द क्लास प्लीज डू शेयर द क्लास एज मच एज यू कैन दैट्स माय ओनली हंबल रिक्वेस्ट टू यू अदर देन दैट गाइस Welcome to Grade Up, India's best platform where you can prepare for UPSC Civil Services exam. Guys, if you want to give a attempt seriously, if you are considering that you should give a UPSC CSC attempt once in your life seriously, then this is the time, and Grade Up Super will provide you. Uh, Tarun, we will see about it, but this class will be in English. Fine, okay. Hey guys, what's up, my dear friends? Good evening, good evening, good evening. What's up? What's up? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Zora. my dear friends please do share this class on each and every platform i cannot see that you are sharing this class very little number of people are today are in the class that's not done my dear friends okay guys let's start the class people will join in because today we have to look at more news than the normal days hello rishi happy birthday happy birthday to you now my dear friends this is daily current affairs with me my name is rohan tyagi your own rohan sir and guys we are doing this class from the past 6 months my dear friends yes we have completed 6 months of daily current affairs guys thank you all to, for attending this class and i hope that in the future as well these class this class will go like this strong regular and informative yes or no tell me now guys let's start the class with a very very important news about your favorite country and that is pakistan guys we all know that uh, pakistan thinks that uh, you know pakistan is a islamic country and he is an equal of arabs you know da intent of pakistan if you look at or the pakistani elites they want to compare themselves with the arabs you know they want to be like arabs we all know they have a arabic obsession pakistani people some you know in india as well we have obviously this thing people they obsess with the arabs arabic culture yes or no my dear friends now guys there is a very very special bird known as hubara bustard known as hubara bustard as you can see this is a beautiful image of this bird now guys this is a endangered species what it is a endangered species my dear friends we all know the iucn status of this species now my dear friends this not so intelligent pakistan what it did is it gave my dear friends it gave my dear friends special permit to hunt this bird what guys did you understand this thing i will show you so guys this is your saudi arabia this is your pakistan here somewhere now pakistan provided special permit to mbs prince mohammed bin salman to hunt habura bustard in pakistan my dear friends this is a very sad news and it shows it shows what the feudal mindset of pakistani government and pakistani people they still are hunting such endangered species as you can see yes or no so that's your favorite country my dear friends so we all know who is prince mohammed bin salman guys we all know mbs we call him he is the we all know a not so democratic leader of saudi arabia 
Yes or no? Not so democratic. Obviously, he is a prince. So, we all know, guys, in Khashoggi killings, we all know about it. A uh, Saudi journalist was killed in Turkey by Khashoggi, you know, Khashoggi killings, we call it. Yes, my dear friends. Now, guys, this Habura Bustard, let's uh, talk about this Habura Bustard. Now, guys, these bustards are quite large terrestrial birds and they basically dwell in the Arabian Peninsula. So, guys, there are two kinds of species, two kinds of subspecies. The first is the North African species and the second is the Asian species of this bird. Fine. Now, my dear friends, and they are one of the heaviest flying birds, obviously, little bit, little bit lighter than the, the great Indian bustard. Now, this great Indian bustard, guys, guys, that we call in Hindi as Godwan. Yes or no? It, it lives where? In desert, desert national park in Rajasthan. Now, guys, this bird is also a delicacy in Pakistan. Guys, why? Great Indian bustard, a related bird. Why its number is dwelling? It is critically endangered. Yes or no? Why? Because in Pakistan, it is being killed. It has been eaten as a delicacy. Other than that, we also have some problems in our area also. For example, feral dogs are killing this bird. Other than that, these birds are hit by the blades of blades of wind power plant as well my dear friends the blades of wind power plant so these are three four things why the numbers the population of this bird is dwelling in india but let's talk about habora bustard now i will show you the extent see as you can see guys this is the extent of the african subspecies of habura bustard and this my dear friends is the is the what? Tell me, as you can see, area where, my dear friends, the Asian subspecies live. Now, my dear friends, as you can see, as you can see, this Habura bustard is vulnerable. The African and the Asian one is endangered. Please do remember this thing. And now, guys, this is being killed. A special permit is being given by the Pakistanis to hunt it. To Muhammad bin Salman. So you can see the feudal mindset of this, this thing. Fine. Now, guys, let's move forward now. Next mission. Next, next, next news. This is GS3. Hello, Komal. So, guys, I am again repeating this thing. This class will be in English. Fine. Now. Hello, shooter. What's up? Shooter, are you fine? Now, my dear friends, let's move to another news. Haya Busa 2 mission. Now, it's not your traditional Haya Busa Suzuki motorcycle. That is the fastest motorcycle of the world. Now, guys, Hayabusa 2 mission. It was launched in 2014. So, it has been in total 6 years when this mission was launched. Now, guys, to understand what was the, what was the objective of this mission, you need to understand what are asteroids. Now, guys, as we all know, guys, as we all know, this is sun. Fine. Now, guys, anything that orbits the sun can be called as asteroid. You know, I will tell you, guys, there are many, many types of celestial bodies. Fine. So, this is a planet. And planet is properly round, you know, pro pro proper spherical object that is bigger, that has good amount of gravity with it, etc. Now, there are some other objects, guys, which are not perfectly round. They are of have hazard shape. They are of erratic shapes. We do not know any shape it could be. And these hap hazard objects, it is also revolving around the sun. They have their own orbit or they may have 
same orbit as a planet fine i will tell you about these asteroids as well so guys if you look at the solar system uh, there are eight planets and the first planet nearest to the sun is mercury then we have venus then we have earth and then we have the mars guys after mars there is a belt of asteroids it is known as asteroid belt yes or no and beyond asteroid belt we have the jupiter we have the jupiter yes or no my dear friends tell me this thing now my dear friends asteroid belt contains many number of asteroids other than that we have many asteroid lying in this zone also find about these asteroids let's talk about the types of asteroid that you will find now guys asteroid they can be of three types i will write it down asteroids they could be of three types please do listen to me carefully now guys those asteroids that are found in the main asteroid belt about which i have told you already this is the main asteroid belt fine so these asteroids they are revolving around the sun in this this concentrated belt between mars and jupiter or beyond mars is that clear now the second type of asteroids are known as trojans are known as trojans what are trojans my dear friends these are those asteroids my dear friends that share its orbit with other large planets trojans are those asteroids which are sharing their orbits with other large planets please write it down yes or no and then my dear friends please do remember this thing the third are the near earth asteroids which are dangerously close to earth n e a remember this thing near earth asteroids now in near earth asteroids there are you know some asteroids which are pha pha are very very dangerous asteroids that are known as potentially hazardous asteroids potentially hazardous asteroids yes or no so this is very 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 important my dear friends so please do hello chaudhary yes you you are right i was there now i am here fine now guys this is pha so this is the classification of asteroid guys that you should know now guys let me tell you in a image format now guys let's say this is sun and this is a normal planet revolving around the sun now in this orbit there is a asteroid as well asteroid is revolving here like this or maybe like this so it is what a guys tell me a torsion now guys if there is a asteroid that is very near to earth very near and it may collide with earth in some time so it will be called pha potentially hazardous asteroid please do remember these facts very very important now guys this hayabusa mission 2 this my dear friends Hayabusa mission 2 was launched by JAXA. JAXA is nothing but my dear friends, Japanese Space Agency. Please do remember this thing. It is what Japanese Space Agency. Now JAXA in 2014, my dear friends, launched a mission. It launched a mission. to a asteroid named ryugu to a asteroid named ryugu my dear friends now ryugu is a 1 km wide asteroid you know how wide was the asteroid just 1 km and it was orbiting the sun please do remember this thing tarun we will see but right now i am under instruction to take the class in english you can definitely go and request grade up that you want the class in hindi please 
fill up the inbox of grade up with this message if you want fine if you want this class fine now my dear friends fine now jaxa launched this mission and as you know so the mission was to send a aircraft to this asteroid known as ryugu and this spacecraft will bring back some of the collected material what it will bring back what tell me some of the material collected from ryugu and it will bring bring back back to earth now guys this hayabusa 2 it launched it was launched it landed properly now my dear friends it is on its journey back to the earth okay and when there will be news that it has reached earth i will definitely tell you fine is that clear to you guys okay sagar ji okay chaudhary ji vishali tarun komal now guys fine so this is the mission hayabusa 2 now guys as you can see in this image this is the real time images taken by this you know this hayabusa 2 spacecraft so the shadow that you see here is of hayabusa 2 launching out my dear friends from this asteroid ryu fine or of this asteroid ryugu please do remember this thing fine now guys because this mission name was hayabusa 2 so no nobody asked me sir what was hayabusa 1 yes there was a mission known as hayabusa hayabusa 1 that also collected sample from asteroid itokawa what is the name of the asteroid itokawa in 2010 please do remember this thing now guys there was also a mission by nasa known as oris rex mission now this osiris rex mission my dear friends it also collected sample from a asteroid named as bennu as you can see and it was completed in october 2020 about which we have talked already in this class yes or no who remember this fact that we talked about this oris rex mission so this was nasa now guys i told you what is this asteroid now guys people are asking a very important question what will what we will do with this sample tell me guys these asteroid they contain history yes my dear friends how the earth was created what was the primitive material that was present on earth etc such kind of questions my dear friends can be answered by studying and analyzing the samples brought back by these missions my dear friends other than that guys if you look at this scenario these asteroids some of them can be exploited economically yes there was a asteroid recently about which i told you it is made up of iron and the cost of iron was more than the gdp of whole earth yes or no like two weeks back we talked about about such a asteroid yes or no so these asteroid also contain precious metal <coughs> <coughs> shrestha the name is given by you know the agencies fine so it was japanese name as you can see so it was given by japan for example fine Trojan asteroids are those asteroids which share it their orbit with other bigger planets. Fine. Ansh, until I told you, I think you joined late. Asteroid is anything that is rotating around the sun. It is not circular like a planet. It is in haphazard shapes like this. As simple as that. They are nothing but rocks which are orbiting around the sun as simple as that fine chaudhary i told you the benefits are you know first of all scientific benefit 
is what we know about the history of earth how history how earth was created and then economic benefit these asteroids it could be it could contain very precious metals for example like iron gold etc fine now structure of ryugu you want to see so this is ryugu as you can see this is uh, sorry aikoa fine and this is ryugu fine now my dear friends this was this news very very important as you can see and uh, let's move forward now now let's talk about a very important topic and this topic is also very important for ethics gs paper 4 lab grown meat my dear friends singapore food agency was the first country guys now see meat is what tell me it is nothing but the tissues that is extracted from a dead body of a animal or a bird yes or no the tissues the muscle the fat that you eat out of the body of a animal is meat now guys but what we can do is we can take out a single cell from a dead body of an animal fine we can do what we can take out a single cell from this animal and then we can culture it in a lab we can multiply this lab multiply this cell yes or no what we can do we can multiply this cell and create lab grown meat and create we are only taking a single cell from that animal like just pinching him and taking the cell out of it and then we are multiplying it this cell to create multiple of cells fine so this is known as lab grown meat now my dear friend singapore food agency became the first agency to approve the sale of this lab grown meat in singapore so in the singapore guys you can buy this lab grown meat yes that's for sure now guys there are two terms here please do you know you you should differentiate between these two terms term number 1 my dear friends is what tell me is lab grown meat and the term second my dear friends is plant based meat both are different guys plant based meat are those meat in guys they are not meat but they look like they may taste like meat they are made from soya soya or maybe from peas from matter and lab grown meat is pure meat that is cultured out of an animal that is grown in a lab after culturing a cell out of a real animal. Yes or no? So please try to differentiate between these two as well. Now, guys, let's talk about you know, you know, we need to talk about the main perspective of this thing. Now, what are the advantages of this lab grown meat? Tell me. What will be the? See, why we require it? See, number one, guys, we all know COVID-19 example I am giving you. Why COVID-19 happened? Anybody can tell me. Tell me. Guys, COVID-19 happened because there is a certain animal known as a pangolin. Now, this animal pangolin is a wild animal that is found overall in whole asia and africa now this pangolin was a carrier animal of covid 19 virus fine now this pangolin this animal was a delicacy was a delicacy in china chinese film stars chinese officers chinese social media influencers they all are eating pangolin and posting their images online on Instagram, etc. These sites like Baidu, their Facebook, just to show their status symbol. So eating pangolin became synonymous to, to, to you know rich people eating good food. Yes or no? So it became a social symbol eating pangolin. So pangolin was in is still in high demand in China. Meat, you know, 
Hence, my dear friends, this COVID-19 is definitely a zoonotic disease. Is a zoonotic disease. So, zoonotic diseases are those diseases derived from animal. So, if you are growing meat in a lab, number one, guys, the threat of zoonotic disease will reduce. Yes or no? You are not eating the live animals, but you are growing your own meat. So, how come that animal could be a reservoir to a virus or a bacteria that can affect us? Yes or no? Tell me. Number two, my dear friends. Now, greenhouse gas emission. Guys, when you want to do what? When you want to grow meat, you will require cows. You will require to feed the cows. They, these cows, you know, where they will be living, you need to take care of them. Yes or no, guys? Tell me what we need. Guys, there will be high amount of greenhouse gas emissions. While, while keeping these animals for our diet. Yes or no? Now, greenhouse gas emission will reduce drastically due to lab-grown meat. Very, very important point. Hence, environmental impact of meat consumption will go down. Yes or no? Tell me this thing. Third is food security. Guys, the cost of meat will come down. The cost of meat will come down. Why? Because when you are keep when you when you are keeping an animal, the cost is very high. You are feeding him, you are taking care of him, you know, etc. So cost will be high. So lab grown meat with the time, my dear friends, will become cheaper and hence better food security. Yes or no? Number five, fourth, my dear friends. Guys, nowadays in India and many places in the world, antibiotic are given to the animal. Yes or no? The meat of an animal is laced with antibiotics. And when you eat this meat, my dear friends, your body becomes resistant to these antibiotics. Yes or no? These antibiotics will not work. So, this thing can also be addressed to you know from this lab grown meat so guys these four five points are very very important please remember this fact fine guys here is an example according to good food institute 2019 report as you can see 95 percent reduction Less land use, as you can see, emission will be reduced in the range of 74 to 87 percent, and nutrient pollution by 94 percent. It will be better, hygienic, same taste. Yes or no? So, please do write these points down. Ankita Mukherjee says that greenhouse gas ka relation so much. Now, I will tell her, guys, if you are living or I am living in this world, tell me, what is my carbon footprint? Am I not breathing? Tell me, am I, am I emitting greenhouse gases? Yes, you are emitting. Hence, animals, they also emit. Fine. And when you are keeping animals, you require light. You require running water. You require food. Fine. Yes, Shreshta Singh, that for sure. It could be chemical free. Antibiotics free. Fine. Now, guys, next news. Number four. Cannabis not a dangerous narcotics. United Nations. Very important news, my dear friends. There is United Nations Commission on Narcotic Drugs, CND, known as UNCND, Commission on Narcotic Drugs. Now, this commission, first let me tell you about this commission. Now, guys, we all know 
किया अबाउट यू एन सिस्टम माई ओल्ड स्टूडेंट दिस थिंग शुड बी क्लियर इन देयर हेड दैट यू एन इट कंटेन्स सिक्स प्रिंसिपल ऑर्गन यूनाइटेड नेशन जनरल असेंबली ये सो नो गाइस then we have united nations tell me security council yes or no then we have my dear friends united nation ecosoc economic and social council then my dear friends we have the what tell me un secretariat then my dear friends we have the your united nations you know we have this international court of justice and then we have the defunct it is defunct now trusteeship council yes or no we have the trusteeship council now this is defunct now this un just a second guys now why is this un cnd that is united nation commission on what narcotic drugs tell me on narcotic drugs it is under un ecosoc please do remember this thing what UN CND is under UN ECOSOC. Yes or no? Tell me this this thing. Now, my dear friends, I am removing this diagram, and you can see here that this UN CD, UN, you know, UN NCD was created in 1946. It is an intergovernmental organization that regulates. narcotics in the world headquartered in vienna australia as you can see right now the head is altayeb bhaket as you can see and it is under un economic and social council that is ecosoc remember this thing now my dear friends in its 63rd meeting in its 63rd meeting it made marijuana that is cannabis the material coming out of this plant my dear friends it see there are many categories of drugs under un cnd guys in un cnd there are many categories of drugs so category 6 drugs are very very dangerous and category 1 are least dangerous so cannabis are removed from 6 and kept in 1 guys i am telling you this thing that cannabis are those drugs that are derived from you know ganja bhang etc sativa plant we call it sativa plant sativa plant now those cannabis are removed from sixth category and put in category 1 my dear friends please do remember this thing this is the news fine as you can see it is removed from sorry it is not 6 it is 4 yeah that's my mistake i'm really sorry fine it is removed from schedule 4 as you can see and it is put in schedule 1 fine that includes the least dangerous category of substances pragatipal what we are talking about you are asking about unf triple c we are not talking about environment right now where are you going we are talking about ram, ram and ramayan and you are talking about arjun and mahabharat how come fine okay guys other than that we all know there are two countries in the world where marijuana is legal number 1 is uruguay Uruguay is where? Tell me. Uruguay is in South America, and number two, it is none other than my dear friends, Canada. It is in Canada. Recently, in 2018, the Parliament has passed this landmark judgment 
in which marijuana can be used as a recreational drug. Yes or no? Tell me. So Canada becomes the first country. Now, guys, in many states of US, marijuana is legal, but for medicinal purpose. For medicinal, not for recreational purpose. For recreational purpose means I am going like a cigarette, I am taking ah, 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 wah, wah. for medicinal purposes. Those people who are suffering from some ailment like schizophrenia, like 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 your this, you know, mental diseases like tremors, etc. In such disease, marijuana can alleviate these symptoms. They can lessen the shaking of hands. They can relax the mind, etc. So, for only medicinal use in some US states like California, my dear friends, this is legal but not for recreational use. Please do not confuse between medicinal use versus, my dear friends, tell me, recreational use. Fine. Recreational use only, my dear friends, where? Tell me, Canada and Uruguay. Guys, in India, in some places, Bhang is legal. For example, in Varanasi, in Ujjain, Shiv Nagris. Fine. Next, my dear friends, about UNCND, I have told you, it is under where, found where, headquartered where, told you already, please remember. So, this is your plant. Sativa plant, as you can see. Fine. Okay. Next. Second cancer genome atlas, my dear friends. There are two organizations, namely DST, Department of Science and Technology, plus CSIR, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. They together are creating the second cancer genome atlas. Guys, what are these genome atlas? See, guys, when you are treating some disease, do tell me what happened. Tell me. Guys, if you have a database in which you can map the, the, the element, the disease with the area. Now, in which area or in which kind of genes which disease is found? For example, let's say cancers of lung, throat, liver, etc. They are found more, my dear friends, in green revolution areas because of increased use of pesticides and fertilizers. Fine. So, the incident of cancer has increased in such areas. That's why today we know that pesticide is bad for us. We are moving towards organic agriculture. Guys, in the same way, if we map other cancers to other regions or other populations, we will create a good database, a data set upon which we can create policies, upon which we can look at, at which areas we need to focus. Yes or no? So, this is the genome atlas we are creating. Fine. The Cancer Genome Atlas, please do remember this thing. Fine. My dear friends, those people who are now sleeping like this. <sighs> sir, we were na just watching a YouTube video and sir, your notification just came. So, we just came to, to do the class, sir. Stand up, my dear friends. This is not the time to sleep. Please write what I am speaking. Fine, that's not how you do a class and that's now, that's not how you read about Operation Trident, my dear friends. Koi shak, guys, today or I should say rather say on 4th, we celebrated Navy Day. And my dear friends, why we celebrate the Navy Day? Can anybody tell me? Tell me. Why we celebrate it? 
we celebrate it my dear friends because on that day we, we completed operation trident trident is what trishul what we did guys i will tell you so guys basically i will tell you the whole background guys we all know that uh, i will first let me make some diagram fine so this was your india which was fighting a two front war with the, this was my dear friends east pakistan before 1971 and this my dear friends was your west pakistan and this was basically my dear friends india now guys what happened see guys the east pakistan it spoke bengali they spoke bengali and they loved their tradition they loved their culture their bengali culture now the people in the west they mostly spoke punjabi pashto sindhi baluchi etc now the people who are living in the west they had the power because islamabad was a joint capital for both east and west pakistan so these people they started to treat these bangladeshis or the east pakistanis my dear friends as a second grade citizen of the country and we all we all know about mukti wahini the force that was created in bangladesh that drove the west pakistani out and fetched freedom for bangladesh so during this time my dear friends when we we when we launched a all attack on pakistan we had one issue and that issue is this karachi port that was located here guys this karachi port was as a at a strategic location because from here they can target our port in okha in kandla in mumbai in near surat etc so these areas my dear friends are on pakistani target fine now guys on 4th december a mission was launched by indian navy and guys we went to karachi and we did teste nabood in karachi we did what we did teste nabood we finished everything on karachi port at minimum 4 5 naval ships of pakistan was sunk the oil tankers were sunk the oiling facilities was sunk and there was a catastrophic damage on the karachi port now in retaliation my dear friends you all know pakistan guys pakistan launched a attack on okha port which is here pakistan launched a attack but after 3 days we again went to karachi and we did the same thing my dear friends and we yes pakistan was stay stay naboot yes or no so that was my dear friends an awesome day for indian navy for indian navy and to commemorate that day we celebrate the navy day operation trident very 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 important battle that we fought in 1971 my dear friends do tell me one thing guys do tell me one thing pakistan never accepted that it lost 1971 war even today guys if you look at the books in pakistan or the people that are speaking for pakistan they never accept the defeat they faced in 1971 when bangladesh was freed guys do tell me if they are not accepting the defeat in you know 1960s 1970s and 1999 kargil war how can they accept that we did a surgical strike and i know many people are here which are watching this class and they do not accept that india did a surgical strike guys how could they even accept that we did a surgical strike 
in 2016 to avenge the Uri. How's the Josh? How's the Josh? Tell me. Tell me, my dear friends. High or not? So, who do not believe that we did a surgical strike? Please, you may leave the class. I do not have any problem with that. Yes, we did it. Our para commandos are one of the best in the world. Fine. That was Operation Trident. Guys, we used Soviet OSA missile boats in that, as you can see, fixed with six missiles. Now they are old, this boat we used for that. Yes or no? My dear friends, fine. Very good. Now, guys, very important news. Guys, Madhya Pradesh has launched a scheme. It is creating, my dear friends, a structure that will focus upon SAM. What is SAM? SAM is not a person. It is severely acute malnutrition children. So guys, what is malnutrition? Malnutrition guys is a condition when, when a child is not getting appropriate calories to eat for its healthy growth. For his or her healthy growth. Anupam Karji, yeah, but surgical strike was done, done by Paras, not by Marcos. Fine, Marcos are for military, you know, they are for Navy, they are naval commandos. Guys, see, I have told you this thing that due to COVID 19, my dear friends, Many people are pushed toward poverty and due to that, there could be a 14.3% increase. What a 14.3% increase in wasting among the children as you can see. Guys, I have told you this thing already that what is mass wasting? Wasting is when according to age, the weight is not appropriate. What is stunting? Stunting is a condition when according to height, the weight is not appropriate. Please do remember this thing. Fine. Now, my dear friends, this was this thing. And you know, India is not performing so good on this area. As you can see, India is performing worse than even your Pakistan. Guys, why this so? Because in India, the sanitation area is not good we are trying to improve it in the last five six years we have improved it drastically but still if sanitation is poor there is a disease known as diarrhea and due to diarrhea guys what happens is the absorption power of intestines and your digestive system it reduces so even if you give small children food nothing will be observed nothing will be absorbed and hence we face the problem of malnutrition. Please do remember this thing. So, my dear friends, this was this. This was the class. This is grade up super, as you know, guys. Guys, if you in your life want to give a serious attempt for UPSC, this is the time. We brought you grade up super. As you can see, a pre come main batch. Guys, with this batch, you can prepare seriously for your next UPSC exam. Guys, please. If you want to give it seriously, then please do consider Grade Up Super. Guys, this is Grade Up Super. You will get the structured life courses and one time payment is required. And test series, mains test series, classes, Yojanas, Hindu, DCA, Current Affairs, etc. All you will get. This is a one-stop solution. Guys, this is our star faculty as you can see. Yes or no? Tell me. Fine. So, guys, this is our rate. As you can see, 6 month, 12 month, 24 month. And we also provide you with free classes, one of which you are enjoying right here, right now with me at 9 p.m. 
so guys this is grade up bye take care good night and keep attending live classes and i will talk to you tomorrow for sure your doubts etc i will be taking tomorrow so guys please do not go without rating the class rate the class as you like the class fine as you like it rate it bye shooter fine shooter bye take care never give up shooter this is the last leg never give up you are a fighter a warrior and warriors never give up fine bye guys take care